Welcome to Think Alive. We're Sharon and Andy, just two people with a dream and a vision of restoring our traditional stone-built farmhouse in southern Spain, transforming it into a beautiful off-grid home and sharing our journey with you. Good morning, folks. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. It's a fairly beautiful day on yes, the Yes, it's nice and warm, a bit chilly this morning, but a um, bit hazy, but we've got plenty of power. We have. We're still waiting on our new um, inverter. inverter. It's, it's on its way. It's supposed to be coming today. It arrived in our local distribution centre on Saturday morning mm -hmm. at about 9 o'clock. It's still there still now, there. according to the tracking. <laughs> so we're not too hopeful. Uh, anyway, it's Sharon's birthday today. Yes. Happy birthday, Poppy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wish Sharon a happy birthday. Um, we went out for a nice meal yesterday. We had a couple we of did. chilled days. Yeah. We might go out for something tonight. We might do. Monday's a funny day, though, isn't yeah, it? It's not many places, places open. So but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, see. we'll, we'll sort see. something out. We'll have a <laughs> celebration one way or another. Um, so anyway, yesterday's inverter is not coming yet. Oh, the courtyard as well. We've uh, just... So many You'll things. be very surprised to hear that we've um, changed our mind again. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember, we said we'd gone back to our original plan, which was to deck this bit. Um, but we're not. But we'd really, really, really like to do it in stone, and it's just the fact that we've to run out of stones. To match all the rest of it. Yeah. So we've been, while we've been out with the dogs and stuff in the hills, it's full of stones, yeah. we've been assembling little piles of them. suitable stones, because <laughs> they're too heavy to carry. And we're gonna when we've got enough, well, we think we've got enough. We're yeah. gonna take the truck round and, and collect them. Go a bit of off road and pick them all up. And there we can so, finally crack on yes, with this. Can't wait. Anyway, so in the meantime, on the basis that this inverter is coming, um, I'm gonna start preparing what I can for the installation. Yeah. So should we crack on? Let's do it. Let's do it. So there's not an awful lot I can do until this inverter actually comes, but things like the generator and the the battery the new inverter inside they all need to be ground bonded or earthed um so just as a matter of interest so this is our uh, fair big rod that goes very deep into the ground i just thought i'd have a quick look at it and i couldn't believe what i saw look at this i'm so glad i checked it because if you can see the thing that holds the earth to the rod is um snapped <laughs> So, uh, I need to change that. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put um, a battery terminal on it round the rod and pick the clamp to that. Um, but yeah, that's a bit lucky. Not the ideal situation. So there we go, that's done. Look at that. It's just, literally just snaps. And um, it's designed to be for earth rod because I bought the, this with the rod itself at the same time. You know, a few years ago now. But So that's it, I'm going to slap a big load of grease all around it. Um, to hopefully stop that anything like that happening in the future at least I left it accessible all I do is lift the cap off it's there in the tube um, so I can easily get to it and inspect it right so I'll get that finished off and then we'll see what's next there we go that should fare much better now put the cap back on and um, job done so the first thing I've done I've fed my earth cable through to outside to the generator um, I've not cut it off yet because I don't know where I'm going to put a junction box here, just tying them all together. Um, but for now, that'll do. So let's have a look on the outside. Right, so here they are. I'm going to take this up to me auto start wire. Um, the auto start plugs in there, the earth goes right next to it. So I'm just going to put um, a connector on the end, just a crimp connector, and then um, get him in place if I can open the box. There we go. Which one? Um, too small. Right, I'll get this sorted. We'll have a look in a minute. Right then, so let's move that out of the way so you can see it perhaps. There's on there. The auto starts in there. Plug that back in now. Um, I'm just going to tie this cable off to this vent here. Keep it all nice and neat. I've taped the cable all the way. I can get this through here, not easy. Put a kink in it. <laughs> Another kink in it. There we go, 
we've got him. Just tie him up there, out of the way. I'm actually going to be changing this cable, the main feed cable, for a bigger one. Um, although that cable is adequate, um, I'd be happy with a, a bigger one. Right, snip that off. Okay, that's not bad, is it? Right, uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to terminate my earth um, loop ground thing here. Um, this is the earth from outside that comes in. I've got a buzz bar in there joining all the earth together so I can top off that. Run another one back. Um, this one will go into there from outside. The one from when I move this, switch for the the breaker for the generator to over here. That can then come behind, put them all in conduit out of the way. Um, so for now, all I can do really is just cut this one off a bit long here, ready to be cut back. Uh, I could probably run, run one behind to go to the battery. Um, other than that, until the inverter comes, I'm a bit stuck. So I'll just to get that done anyway. By the case, so being that me earth junction thing is going to be somewhere around here I'm going to put the earth in now so at least the generator on an extra bit of long cable I'm not going to cut it at least that's earth because um, it's an operational it should have been earth ages ago um, so I'm just going to make a little hole through the box here stick it into me my buzz bar me my bar there my earth block whatever you call it and um, then I can put the front back on that bit's done until I come to undo this all this lot is going to be gone so, hence my logic for that. So, I've got my drill somewhere, I'll get a hole in it, get him in, and um, at least the generator's there then. There we go, it's a bit crude, but <laughs> so I'll put them all in conduit when I come to do it finally. Um, I might try and get the battery lead in now, and the battery earth, just run that through to here so it's kind of ready. And um, in fact, no, I'm going to leave it, because it'll probably get it in the wrong place. Um, and I don't want to, if I cut this, I have to start joining it back together because then the generator's not there. So forget that, um, scratch that. We're playing a waiting game again. It's now, it's two o'clock. Um, it's still in the depot in Yekla. Um, they tend to have lunch between two and four. Um, hopefully it's going to be on the van maybe this afternoon. This, they promised it me today before 8 p.m. So I'm going to have another look. I'm going to keep our fingers crossed. Right, okay, so our inverter never came um, yesterday. I had to phone them up um, to see if it was coming or if it would be coming or what the score was. And they've said um, it's coming this morning, which means up until 2 o'clock in Spain, usually the morning. Um, I've been closely watching the tracking and oh, a couple of minutes ago, it's actually on the van. It says it's out for delivery. So we're waiting. I've got my phone like here waiting for them to ring because they won't be able to find us and they don't need much excuse not to come um so we're on red alert <laughs> right well eventually it's here um, i had to drive to the next village to get it it was a bit too confusing for them to come to our village but we've got it um it says on the back the first thing it says on the mountain instructions mount it to a, a fireproof surface right okay um what i'm going to do i'm going to screw i've just cut two pieces of wood I'm going to screw them to the wall for the mounting fixings I've seen a lot of people do this they don't get that hot this one's been mounted to a board for two years um, and that will give even more airflow behind it to keep it even cooler because it's actually got air holes in the back where it sits against the wall which seems a bit mad so we're going to do it differently so what I'm going to do I'm going to glue and screw this to the wall up there and then glue and screw another one to the wall to the board a bit lower down then we can fix our um, inverter to it. Yeah, plenty of glue on it. I'm going to put the middle, I'm putting three screws in it, I'm going to put the middle one in first and then level it and then put the end ones in. I've marked my board, I've marked my centre of this. Drop my screw, look I've got another one. <laughs> Right, I'll get the 
another one in there and then get the bottom one on. Right, so here it is. It's going on the wall. What I've done, I've put one screw in. I'm going to hook it over that. It is quite heavy though. And so it's going to stabilise it, hopefully, while I get the other screw in. Mm. <laughs> That's it. Lovely. You got it? Yeah. Set it to the way as much as you can. Yeah, I got it. Right, up at the right hand side, up at the right a bit more, down a little bit, <laughs> up a bit, a bit more, that's it, hold it there, hold it there, join in. Now fully. And relax a bit. Should be alright that. There's two more to go in the bottom, so I need to take this front cover off and then fire them through. If I've measured it right, it should line up perfectly. <laughs> right, get the bottom ones in. I don't know who designs these things, but this one's got a switch and a lot of wires right in front of it. And this one's not much better. They're never designed by people that have to fit them and stuff, are they? Same with cars. Right, brilliant. Okay. Right, so the next thing to do is to stick the positive and negative from the battery on. Little big terminals in here. That's the positive. There's no power to them yet. They're not wired up. The beauty of these batteries is um, they don't do anything until you actually switch them on either. All we want to do today as well, like we tried the other day, is get them to talk to each other, which will be a result. And it should do because the battery manufacturers recommended this inverter. There's the note. We shall tighten them to the correct torque in a bit. Just want to see if it works. Right, okay. Right, so we're going to connect the battery to battery cables now to the battery. There's one, two, it's still switched off, which is good. Then the communications cable, then let's see where we had the confusion last time. Apparently this one's a lot simpler. What we need to do is to put this in the, it's got a BMS port there. And then you can either use the CAN, CAN bus port or the RS485 link as well. So we're going to try it in the CAN port. Um, then we need to do the settings, we need to tell it it's a lithium battery and there's a couple of other protocols which I'm going to just work through the instructions um, switch it on start the battery some life anyway, it's flashing a bit oh, here we go, the beeping um, right, I'll see what it does and come back in a second absolutely fantastic um, took me a little while, I made a couple of mistakes, I forgot, uh, A I forgot to um, change the dip switch, it's number 3 with this inverter, so uh, I wonder why I wasn't getting anywhere, and then I forgot to set program 1, which is solar first, battery next, utility third, having done that, then swapped it to lithium, the BMS is plugged into the can, and it's working, no beeps, it's all happy, it's got a little symbol showing that it's that's chatting to that, which is chatting to the thing. Happy days. Right, that that's made my day actually absolutely fantastic. Right then, so being that it's happy days, um, I'm gonna run these wires round the back of here, on the back of the board, make two holes for them to come out on the front, nice and neat. Same with this one. Um, then they're out of the way, all tucked nice and neatly behind there. Um, 
yeah, brilliant. I want to try and get as much of it as I can, obviously, today, because tomorrow I want to try and switch the whole lot over. It's going to be a hell of a job um, to do it in a day. Let's see how we go. Right, so I've drilled my holes. The tricky part now is getting the cables through. I'm going to use the old wire trick. We push a wire through, hopefully get it to the end. Must be here somewhere. There it is. Twist it round the one we want to pull through. And then hopefully, this one's going to be tricky I see, because it's quite thick. That's not going to work. I'll try a bit of tape on this one. Um, see if we can pull them through. Here's the tape. Cool. So I'm just going to take the wire to the thing and see if I can ease it through. I might need a bigger hole just for this one. We'll see. Now, right, so the comms cables through. I've just got the pause through. wasn't too painful. Now the neg, where is it? It's, it's fallen down somewhere. Here it is. Brilliant. I can't wait to get this done, you know. Probably need to push him through there first. Stupid boy. So we're just shoving through there. Really pops out the end. Put him through the, the ring. Put a little twist on it. And then, hopefully well, this one will come through as well. Plays nicely for me. There we go, give it a tug. Yeah. There we are. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to get these connected up again. Then I can tie these up. I've done that one with the communications cable already. You can just push behind there neatly. We can put a cable tie around the handle there. And um, nice job. Alrighty, sometime later. I think I've got this figured out. What I'm going to do, this battery apparently has got 53%. That one over there has got 53%. Um, capacity in it which is ample for us for a couple of hours while the switch is over. I'm going to wire, I found a thing that will fit in there, a bit of conduit, I'm going to wire from here, up there, along there, down there, into my consumer unit which you can't see. Hang on, I'll move the camera around a bit. There. <laughs> then I can disconnect this lock. Um, so this should power everything we're using in the house for a, a good, good few hours, um, which will give me a chance then to slowly bring these, get rid of all these panels, bring my switches over here. I can even wire them up one at a time, get one bank running, so one bank will then be charging the battery and so on until, because there's just going to be a junction box in here where they're all going to come into, so they're going to come in into my junction box through a fuse up to there. So each time I get an extra string in, I can just wire it into me, the junction box, that's the theory. So, yep, it's been a headache, head scratching, they're figuring out the easiest way to do it because we can't really be without power for long because our water and everything is, is pumped. Um, so, in the morning. Right, so after our happy days moment yesterday, um, we're going to crack on and try and get some more of this done. Um, don't know if I'm going to get it done today. Um, if anyone's actually considering installing their own solar system. The principles are the same. The only difference is with this, the panels are already in, the wires are already through, um, but the principles are the same. If you've got a basic understanding of things, you should have no problem. But there is always a disclaimer, do seek professional advice if you've got any doubts. 
Right, so anyway, so we've got our inverter wired up to our batteries. The batteries aren't connected anyway, um, obviously, just in case. Um, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to do all the AC, the generator feed and the output at the end, um, because that's fairly straightforward. Um, but I want to get these the panels um, wired in, but I'm starting from this side and working backwards. The reason I said before, I want to get as much done as I can, so when we do come to change it over, it's done quickly, as quickly as possible, because we don't want to be without power. So the first thing I'm going to do is get, I'm going to put, there's going to be, can you see my hole there, yeah, three, three strings of panels, and that's another reason we've changed to the 48 volt system. Um, this can charge, fit, take the feed from all three strings and power the batteries, whereas on a 20 volts, 24 volt system, they're completely different and they can't handle the voltages. We're going to have three banks of panels, they're going to be around 170 volts a bank, um, but the current's only going to be 9 amps um, each bank. They're, good, they're going to be then wired in parallel to give me about 27, 28 amps. Whereas on these, each one of these feeds is over 30 amps. Um, so that's the difference. Um, right, anyway. <laughs> so, I'm going to... The three bank disconnect switches are going to be there. They're going to feed, theoretically, into a, a junction block there. Um, and then I'm going to put the positives to there, I'm going to drill another hole so all the negs can come through and feed into my junction and then they're going to feed up negative and pause with a fuse, um, a 40 amp fuse in line to protect the thing should it, anything go wrong. So let's get on with it. Right, so the first bit's done, we've got neg goes into the junction box there at the bottom. Red, pause. Um, 40 amp fuse, it's a resettable fuse, um, which is cool because if anything does happen we don't have to change the fuse, we just reset it um, after finding out what the problem was of course. Um, that goes into there as well, um, brilliant. Right, so what we're going to do next, I think the first thing I want to do is, um, my panels are in three banks on the land, this is the top one, I'm going to disconnect this, um, I need to rewire, reconfigure the panels and wire them all in series. Um, and then get, try and get that connected to the battery because um, it said yesterday it's at 53% try and get a bit more charge into that and then perhaps tomorrow I can do the others and run the house off this with a bit more charge in it um, and probably put the backup generator into it as well just in case so yes, so if we turn that off can you see that? yeah you shouldn't unplug panels when they're under load <laughs> um, so turning up, there's no load on them now. I can safely unplug them, disconnect them from the top. First off, I need to disconnect the, the battery leads though, um, because whatever happens, these will still be um, super light because they're connected to the batteries. So there's one on there and one over there, so I'll get them off now. So the neg's out of the way. Let me just take the pause out of here. Now, the lots of spare leads. There he is, he's gone. Took him over there. Um, so now I need to go and disconnect um, the panels so this can never be live again for a bit. So basically it's like spaghetti under here. All we're going to do is just unplug each of the panels. One, it's like that. Two, keep these wires out of the way. Sorted. Uh, I'll carry on and get the rest of them done. So with them done, we can now open our junction box and disconnect this spaghetti. Because we don't need it. Be interested to see what it's like in here actually. Been outside for a while. Come on. I'm nearly undone. look at that absolutely immaculate super clean fab uh, right then I'll get this lot out of the way right so with that safely out of the way we can take this switch off move these out of here the neg will come through this hole here go into the block the pause I'm going to mount on this end one here so they're in the right order then 
and that'll run into the positive side of this. And then, so yeah, I'll get it done. Mm. Alright, so we need our wire. Our wire technique again. I'm going to shove it through the hole. Not always easy. It's gone the wrong way. <laughs> there we go. There he is. Now I'll unravel this. Where's it gone? That one there. Tape him to there and pull him through. Right, so he's off the wall, just disconnect the, the cables. I haven't done them with the ratchet first. <laughs> come on. Don't need him. Don't need him though. No. Oh, come back. Put the back of there for now. Same with the other one. Right, so there we go, he's through. What I've done, I've just bent that connector up so he'll sit like snugly right over my hole like that. And then the other wire will come out the top and just pop into there. I don't think the bit that I took off is going to be long enough. But I've got the battery lead. I can just use, use this, cut that to length, because that'll do perfectly. Right, so we'll get him wired up. All we've got to do now is, um, Cut him off, bear the end back, stick him in there. Fab. So, um, where's my things? Get him done. So, what we need to do now with these panels is wire each one, pause to neg, pause to neg, pause to neg, etc., all the way along. So, I'm using a different junction box, a smaller one, a brand new one, because they're only going to have two wires coming out of it, one pause. And then the neg from that end feeding all the way back down, join them up. So I'll get that done. Um, I also forgot there'll be a 15 amp um, fuse and blocking diode going on each each of the three strings as well. Basically, the, we're going to have just about nine nine and a half amps coming out of each panel. Um, so 15 amps fine. And this also stops. It's a they should have a blocking diode in them anyway. But this is an additional one which will stop any current feeding back. Um, and it's dead clever. It just plugs in with the, the normal plugs. Happy days. Right, so with all that done, switch my switch on here, put my voltmeter across, see what we're getting. Turn it on, that helps. 168 volts, can you see that on there? I don't know. Um, yeah, it's about that. It goes up and down as the sun shines on them. Um, but basically that means that all my connections under the panels are good. And um, I've got a good voltage coming in here. So I'm going to click that off for a minute. Reset my fuse. You can't quite see, can you? So it's on. Um, fire. Up. Connect the batteries. Even. Even. Can you see, am I in the way? Am I doing a good job of this or a terrible job of showing you? Um, so we connect the batteries. There you go on there. Pause on there, shove them on until you get a good click. Um, I'm going to leave my panels turned off for now because I just think it's dark. And um, start the battery. There we go, wait for this to do its bleeping stuff. If you can see that on there, I don't know how well this will come out, but we've got um, 7 amps coming in from the panels, it's putting 17 amps into the batteries, which is cool, and um, the batteries are at 50, is this work, 54% um, and charging, fantastic! Right, the battery is up to 73% now, the battery is up to 73% from just one bank of panels. 
So, excellent, right. So, the next thing I'm going to do, because I want to get this, try and get this finished tomorrow, I just have to drill a new hole through the wall from a massive cable I got for the generator. Um, so he's going to live in there. Um, I'm not going to disconnect the other one now because we're still using it on our old system. Um, but uh, when that comes in, I'm going to put my breaker in there, wired up to this, and then wire this into my inverter for my generator power. Um, should we need it? It's brilliant. So, yeah, um, that's us. I'm so pleased that this is working out. Um, Tess, you don't know how happy it makes me. I'm going to go and have a celebration beer. Um, thank you so much for watching. We hope you've enjoyed it. Part two will be on, um, what day is it today? On Sunday, Thursday, um, tomorrow. Um, so part two will be on Sunday and we're gonna get the rest of it done and finished off and hopefully be up and running on our new system. All this will be for sale. It all works if anyone's interested. <laughs> so fantastic, so yeah, thank you so much everyone. Um, we'll see you on Sunday.